Set that lasted two hours and three minutes. Passerelle serving second set. 15 love. Gonzalo is wondering about the light here now. Third to love. Forty love. Game to Pantarell, first game, second set. Gon Gonzalez really worried about the light here, asking Mr. Duncombe, the referee, how long do we have to play here in this light? But this is a question for the referee, I think. And the, re the umpire getting through to the referee's office to um, ask for a decision. Gonzalez is asking for someone to call the referee, but the umpire is on to the referee's office. Certainly the light has faded very badly, but I've seen much tennis played on the center court in light John, worse than John this. Gonzalez is complaining about the fading light. What? Yes. Pardon? Right, huh? <laughs> Where are you? Play on for the time being. I can't hear you at all, umpire. Passero leads by one game to love in the and second. The match goes game. on. Gonzalez is really very unhappy indeed well, about why this. Why can't we wait? Why should we play well, when I can't see the ball? Well, I just seen deep ball. There's no sense in me playing if I can't see the ball. Again, I have a little background on this. Uh, Pancho, in the last year or so, uh, has felt his eyes were going bad to the point that he actually doesn't like to play indoor tennis any longer except that he has to uh, unfortunately with most of the professional tournaments he does play an awful lot of indoor tennis but he really doesn't like to he feels that he can't see so at this time of the evening with the overhanging clouds and so forth he's really having trouble and he's very mentally disturbed but Mike Gibson is now on the scene and at least Pancho will be able to direct his question to Mike. All right, ready to go. Well, there's the referee, Captain Mike Gibson, watching this match very closely from the uh, entrance where the players come in. Fine backhand pass there by Passerell, who's keeping very calm in all this. Fourteen thirty. Time smash. Game. 
game to Gonzalez. One game all, second set. One game all in the second set, and that score 2-4 under the previous sets, of course, means 24-22 to Passerelle, who's serving now. 15 love. Fifteen all. Fifteen thirty. I've seen many matches on the center court and outside played later than this and certainly in worse light it's Gonzalez serving love 15 love 30 and really Gonzalez is really very very disturbed now Four games to one, Passerelle leads in the second set. And Mike is there, uh, of course, has a real problem. If I have to play under these conditions, I'd rather do so. I didn't care to this time. Well, I've never seen this happen at Wimbledon before. Quite unprecedented, this. And Mike Gibson, the referee, watching this, but with this program held up completely yesterday by rain, and four matches scheduled for the centre court today. Gonzalez addressing himself to Mr. Dunco, uh, Duncan, the umpire. Well, remarkable scenes. I've never seen anything like this at Wimbledon before. Unless I'm wrong, I think Poncho told Mr. Duncan that uh, unless the match is called, I think that he might pick up his rackets. Nope, he's going to go on with it. Of course, Mike Gibson uh, under severe pressure here and really not the blame. It should be actually 1540, I'm sure. Uh, Passerelle hit a good ball in the first point, as he's pointing out. Which is not 15. It should be 1540, I think. And Poncho, I'm, I'm sure, knows the score is 1540. And even though he's very unhappy, he will not protest this for sure. As Mr. Passerelle comes to appeal a little closer. 15 love, I hit a... 30 all is the score. I'm playing 15 morning. I hit a morning. I won the first two points. 15 40. Happy it's still set point. Game and second set. The Petrel 
six games to one. So Mike Gibson is just calling it off because of the light. The match will now be the operation sailing light. And Gonzalez really throwing his racket down there. Mr. Duncan, uh, the, uh, Mr. Duncan, the umpire, has called it off at the uh, request of the referee, Captain Mike Gibson, who watched all of that uh, towards the end of that set, watched all of the play. And so at quarter past eight, Gonzalez retires to the dressing room, a match that started at 5.53. And there's the scoreboard. 24-22 to Passero, the first set, and 6-1, the second. Two sets to love then, Passero leading Gonzalez, who's uh, seeded at number 14 in the championship. An extraordinary match, Jack. Yes, and uh, there's a lot to be discussed, Dan. Uh, I, I, I think that uh, the, the problem was that uh, Poncho obviously couldn't see, but in fairness to the play tomorrow, in fairness to the people who were here, Mike Gip Gibson's decision also had to include, in fairness to Charlie Passarell, who had spent two hours trying to tire out his older appointed opponent and deserved a chance, as long as there was playable light, to put over the knockout punch. So uh, Poncho had uh, his right to appeal, and I think that uh, Mike Gibson no doubt did the right thing in allowing it to go on a little longer until he was convinced, and I believe he called in one of the committee of management here, Dan, Derek Hartwick, to help back up his uh, feelings in the matter. It's a shame that uh, Poncho got so upset because he was playing Charlie absolutely dead even, and it was actually the last seven games where he lost his touch, and of course, by losing control of his disposition, he could no longer play his top championship game. So we'll see, I imagine, the first match on the center court tomorrow will be the return of the Passerelle Gonzalez match to play it to its conclusion. Notice that we have a different umpire today, Harry Target. Harry Target. And we've just been informed that, in fact, they're having a full four-minute knockout. And Gonzalez, seeded number 12, unofficial world ranking of 10. There is no official world ranking. 41 years of age, born in Los uh, Angeles, turned professional 20 years ago. Um, as I said yesterday, it was when my friend here sitting by the side of me, Jack Kramer, was the world number one. And it was from 1954 until about five years, for about five years, he dominated the professional game until he was succeeded by Ken Rosewall. Gonzalez twice won the American Championship, 1948 and 49. And as an amateur, only played once at Wimbledon. And uh, that was in 1946. Passerelle leads two sets to love. He lost in the fourth round of singles, but won the doubles Third with set. Frankie Parker. Gonzales so it's Gonzalez serve. to serve. So the third set. Love 15. Fifteen thirty. Game to Gonzalez. First game, third set. I don't know what Pancho Gonzalez did this morning, but uh, Dan, his opponent, Charlie Passarell, happened to ring through to my room this morning at 9 o'clock. And he was 
was looking for uh, a good friend of mine, his doctor and my doctor, who's arrived from Los Angeles to watch the tennis. And Charlie was on his way at 9 o'clock out to Queens to get a, a good little bit of extra warm-up so that he would That's be ready to go very quickly in the early stages of this one, two, or three sets that he might have to play this afternoon. All right, love one, Charlie now serving. And right away we see a very aggressive Gonzalez who was going to go to the net on that return. So he's going to try to attack Charlie this afternoon. All. A tremendous volley by Passerell there off to that fierce backhand of Gonzalez, dipping low of the net. Great shot by the younger American. have been a real closey because Charlie looked like he was going to hit the ball until he heard that call. He thought it was going to be called good. Passerelle, one game all. One game all in the third set, two sets to uh, Passerelle, and Gonzalez has yet to break Passerelle's serve in the match. I must say, Gonzalez looks as though he's in very good rhythm indeed. Fifteen, love. Thirty, love. Thirty fifteen. Gonzalez eighth double four, two today. Fifteen. 
James Gonzalez. Two games to one, Gonzalez leads. Well, Jack, I thought the uh, overall strategy of uh, Passerell yesterday was clearly defined, playing the short return of serve, getting um, Gonzalez well below the height of the uh, net for a stooping volley, and then tossing it over his head. It looks as though he's going to continue with it today. Yes, uh, that obviously is the, the way to try to play Pancho. Uh, if you're not able to defeat him uh, by better play, the theory is that at his age, Gonzalez able to defeat him uh, by better play, the theory is that at his age, Gonzalez being 41, uh, you should be able to outlast him if you can get him into a long match. And a lot of people will probably be mo noticing something on Charlie's shoes. As we look back there, you can see that on the backs of them, there's little black tabs. There's nothing special about them. I think that's just an identification of the shoe itself. So Charlie now serving one, two. Up 15. So players almost for the first time in this championship having to contend with a very brilliant son here. Oh. Fifteen all. Pancho continually trying to chip that backhand and Charlie's playing the volley so steadily I think Pancho is going to have to to break that serve for the first time get around and hit more forehands he's got to go for more winners rather than just keep the ball in play 40-15 Two game ball. Two games all in the third set. First two sets to Passerell and some rather good serving by Passerell there. Gonzalez to serve. Fifteen all. Thirty fifteen. James Gonzalez. Three games to two, Gonzalez leads. Third set. 
From the centre court now, we move straight on to court number four, and the reigning champion and favourite for the title, the number one seed, Rod Laver of Australia, still struggling against Premjit Lal, the joint Indian number one. Lal took the first set by six games to three, and Laver has dropped his serve and trails five games to three in the second set. So he looks in danger now if Lal can hold his next service game of dropping two sets. Well, now we've got one or two other results before we go back to the centre court. Ayala has beaten Howe, Ayala of Chile, 6-4, 6-2, 12-10. <laughs> Ladies singles, Zegan Fush, United States, beat Casals United, or lost rather, to Casals United States, 6-1, 7-5. And Miss Tutt of Great Britain has beaten Miss Bounty Great Britain, 6-2, 6 love. Now back to centre court and Dan Maskell. And it's Passerelle serving. Gonzalez leading 3-2 in this third set. No breaks of serve. And that's Poncho's best chance to try to get around the second serve of Passerelle, hit the forehand, and really try to do some damage on the offense. Perhaps he might chip this one and come in behind it because he's got to attack. Fifteen all. And the net court volley of Passerelles certainly gave Gonzalez a chance there for that winner down the line. Game to Passerelles. <laughs> Three games all. Third set. First two sets to Passerelle and Gonzalez to serve with the sun shining right down into his, over his right shoulder up into the sun as he serves this one. And I think that sun has become a factor on the toss of Pancho Gonzalez. It seems to me he's starting to try to move the ball a little over his shoulder to avoid the sun and is throwing off his rhythm. 30 all. Gonzalez leads third set. Just thinking, Jack, the uh, court here today with this near 15,000 people watching. The court here today, I think, a little faster than yesterday. Yes, uh, Dan, I think the lack of rain and then, of course, the 
sun drying it out all morning would pick up the speed and it occurs to me that Gonzalez having the opportunity to serve first he really is in a lot better position to, to know whether he's going to try harder to break the server pass rail meaning he'll go all out on.